Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the Executive Director of One Community, a 501c3 nonprofit organization purpose to lead a collective and a collaborative of sustainable communities building for the future of us all. And the way that we're doing that is by creating open source blueprints uh, that we free share with all the details for building these sustainable cities. We're creating seven different sustainable city models, including a duplicable city hub, food infrastructure, energy infrastructure, housing, education model, recreation model, uh, as well as an application for tracking it all and uh, evolving the whole thing as part of a global collaborative. So this is our video update number 19. And as always, there's a written blog that goes along with this video update. If you're interested in reading the written blog, then click on the link in the YouTube description and you can see pictures and all the other visible visual uh, updates that go along with this video blog, including links to all of the, the details. So let me jump into it. As always, I'd like to do a quick overview of everything that we've accomplished for the last week. And then I'd like to talk, I'd like to go in depth on a few of these items because we've got some really crazy, exciting, fantastic stuff that we've accomplished in the last week. Um, pieces that we've been working on for a long, long time that we finally got up on the website and I'd like to share those with you. So the quick bullet point overview of everything that we've accomplished. Uh, in the last week, let's see, we got our Botanical Gardens page created, which is regenerative earth practices built into the infrastructure of these sustainable communities. Um, second, we also, uh, it was a big week for food infrastructure progress. Um, we've updated our highest good food uh, overview page and portal. We've updated, updated the details, uh, Aquapini and Wallapini open source portal and hub, as well as um, adding in all of the details for the four different zones that our food infrastructure will demonstrate. Our goal is not just to, to grow sustainable food, but to demonstrate that using this model, you can actually grow sustainable food that is superior in quality to what it is that you get in the grocery store, but more importantly, that you can produce a diversity of food that almost nobody can purchase in the grocery store, even in a, in a major city like New York or in Los Angeles, where it'd be very difficult to get your hands on the quality and diversity of food that it is that we're growing. And so to accomplish that goal, uh, with, there's four primary zones, which I'll talk about as well later, that we've defined. And so those details are now up on the website. Uh, in addition to the food details, because it went with the botanical gardens, we also updated our tropical atrium open source portal. And so that is now complete. And, um, and uh, the open source directory that goes along with that tropical atrium, we've made some more updates to the tropical atrium uh, food page the uh, harvesting and production page, as well as more updates to the food infrastructure, uh, the Aquapini and Wallapini harvesting and production. We're just slowly but surely plugging in all the details because we have descriptions and planting details that are being added for every single page, or for, sorry, for every single plant, so that when people produce, reproduce our food infrastructure, they have a roadmap to follow for growing some of these and maintaining some of these amazing plants. And so our economic botanists and our horticulturists have been working overtime and doing amazing work and putting all that together. And then we've got two other people working on editing that and putting it up on the website as well. And so more progress on that also. Um, additionally, we've got lots of progress happening with the Sago Center Duplicable City Hub. So we believe that there's value in creating a duplicable city hub that saves on resources and uh, provides a recreational center so that individual homes can be minimalist homes and then you have this amazing beautiful space where people can congregate which replaces laundry facility it replaces the dining uh, dining rooms creates a uh, general dining facility as well as a recreation hall and so in this last week we've got our laundry details for laundry for 300 people um, completed and then we've also we're now working on the uh, planting and landscaping details for the central area there. And then additionally, uh, P2S right now is reviewing a bunch of work that we've done, which is the engineering firm that's working with us with mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineering. And so uh, hopefully we're going to hear, hear back from them this week as well. So, and then 3D. Um, 3D is moving forward, which is what has uh, had us engage now the planting and landscaping details for that structure for the duplicable city hub because now we're starting to look at the 3D of the central area, we're realizing that we need to choose the plants that are going to be grown in there, hopefully things that will produce food, 
and we're starting to look at exactly what that's going to look like within that environment because the whole the whole city center is meant to be open source free shared and duplicable and so it's exciting to be getting into those planting details as well um, and then additionally this last week we also um, had a meeting about the ACE application and I will talk great detail about what the ACE application is going to do is, is going to do as well but the ACE application page is updated if you want to see that one community global.org forward slash ACE ACE dash APP app and you can see the software the open source software that we are designing to be able to track everything that we're doing and to be able to collaborate globally with these sustainable cities that we're building so that the communities building for the future working with us for the highest good of all are can't have a method of a streamlined method of taking what it is that they're doing and and sharing that with us and us sharing with them and so us so that we can collaborate to collect together and create a more effective global archive to evolve it all and so I'll talk in detail about that and then last but not least I and mean, there's a lot of stuff that happened I mean there's stuff in the education program that's happened in the background too but the main visible stuff uh, we also completed an article on resource-based economy that was published in on uh, challengespecies.net we're excited to put that out and in the process of doing that we also updated our resource-based economy page and created an additional page related to a resource-based economy explaining uh, what that is from our perspective and how we feel that it is a valuable component of the highest good for all philosophy and um, really representative of the structures like the actual structure of our cities as well in the way that we're building them to be collaborative environments where people work together to build their homes to build their food infrastructure to build their housing infrastructure and in return for that collaboration and that sharing overhead is significantly lower the cost of building all of that is significantly lower the cost to maintain it all is significantly lower and the residual benefit of that for an individual and for the entire group the community the village the city is that everybody has more free time and so maybe that's a good place to, to enter into um, talking about this those details now so let's go into that um, so that's our that's our update let's talk about the details of all this different stuff and so first thing I just want to talk about the resource based economy because I think it's a real foundation of this sustainable communities building for the future concept like a group of communities working together globally collaborating to evolve the whole concept of the community model, the village model, the city model that is totally self-sufficient and self-sustainable to working together to make itself even more sustainable, to make itself even more ecological and and um, thriving and prospering in integrity and regenerating our planet. And so this ties in really well to all of our updates that we've accomplished because it's it ties in directly to the botanical garden aspects that we put up on the website as well and so the idea with the resource-based economy and there's there's a lot of different definitions of this but our idea of a resource-based economy and the way that we see this benefiting within an organization and this is what the article that we wrote was about was taking the concept of a family and applying it to a community it's really that simple you know and then there's there's other ideas that look at a resource-based economy expand that much farther and they say no no the idea of a resource-based economy is also to look at technology and maximizing efficiency and we like that idea as well and so the article that we wrote and the concept of resource-based economy that we also want to open source and free share and we're working with some amazing collaborative partners that are really promoting this concept of resource-based economy the idea that we want to promote is this idea that it if if the goal is to if the goal is to create a style of living that is considered by most to be vastly superior to what we're experiencing right now even if your definition of what that particularly looks like in our opinion it makes sense it seems to objectively make sense that if you have what you need every single person doesn't need to have a version of everything for instance if you have access to a toaster, why does everybody need a toaster? If you have access to a car, why does everybody need a car? If you have access to an amazing social space, why do you need an amazing social space in your home? What if 10 people put their resources together to building something like that that was shared space instead? 
and created something more beautiful for less than the 10 people's resources that would have gone into building it individually, you could create something that was much, much more beneficial and beautiful to the group than, than those individual spaces and for less money than creating all those individual spaces. And so take that idea and apply it to everything. Go, okay, well, we don't all need a car. If we all have access to a car whenever we need to use one, that's a great idea. If we all have access to a toaster when we need one, or a camera when we need one, or an iPad when we need one, or whatever these things are, let's build this into the infrastructure of the model itself. Let's show people that if you wanted to create a completely new life for yourself, you don't have to start from scratch if you pool your resources, right? If we take our resources and we put these things together, and then we can take the additional available resources that we have in the way of money and things like that and invest them in building up these sustainable cities and these sustainable villages and then work together with a global collaborative, a global cooperative to improve the whole model, to make it more effective, to make it more efficient, to make it even more sustainable. By doing that, we create more free time for ourselves, more time to do the things that we want. We free up more resources to apply in the different areas that we want. And instead of working in competition with each other, we start to work together. And that's the whole idea. And how this ties into the botanical garden model is we've been looking at it and saying, well, how do we, how do we, how do we not just build sustainable cities, villages and communities, but how do we take it to the next level and build regenerative communities, villages, and cities. What does that look like? And the botanical, mar the botanical garden model is exactly that. And it applies to our food infrastructure too, because we said, well, how do we not just, what we're doing right now, that what we can buy in a grocery store is pretty good, but there's such a broader diversity of what's available out there. If you remove the limitations of it, it needs to look perfect, or remove the limitations of it, it needs to last on the shelf, for a long time or we remove the limitations to it needs to sell because it's the most popular you know because the Fuji Apple is what everybody wants and so now we're not carrying all these other versions of it if we remove those limitations and we say instead what we want is high nutritional value high uh, personal value as far as our health etc which goes with the nutrition and we want maximum diversity because we want to really celebrate what's possible with food and we create our food infrastructure based on that because we don't have these other limitations. And then we share that food infrastructure with our larger community and the community outside of that community as well. That, we think, is really the foundations of a resource-based economy, our concept of that. And so the botanical garden goes along with this because the idea of creating a regenerative community that doesn't just, it's not just sustainable in that it's not just going to last, but it actually provides significantly more than it takes from the environment. It's actually regenerative. This is the idea that we are really, really uh, looking to champion with the botanical gardens model. And the way to do that is a simple process of, of cataloging all of your natural flora and fauna on the property and then keeping very close track, it's called accession, of everything that you bring in to your environment and then choosing to bring in diversity to really look at expanding diversity and playing around with what's possible there what else can you do and we want to create an environment where we're really where we're really actively engaging this idea and benefiting on a personal level because of the diversity and the amazing flavors and and productivity of everything that we're growing and you'll see this if you go to our planting and harvesting page you can see that we are growing some trees that can feed a village one tree. You, know, you look at jackfruit, you look at breadfruit, and what these, these trees can produce, it is ridiculous. But the food is amazing. If you've ever eaten these things, they're delicious. Delicious. But they're not things that you can buy in a traditional grocery store. And so our, we're building our entire food infrastructure around this idea because the basics that you can get in the grocery store are easy. Of course, we'll be able to produce tomatoes and zucchini and, and cucumbers and that kind of stuff. But we want to build a solid infrastructure with the botanical garden model that also supports these much more interesting exotic fruits and foods in an environment as well as just amazing flowers and other things that are just some of these species are going extinct and we have the ability to preserve them and not just preserve them but to build them right into the sustainable communities model and that's why we call it sustainable communities working together and building the future is because if we can show we believe if we can show individual benefit 
an economic benefit and communal benefit as well. And we build recreational spaces into all of these places as well. Because if you've got a community recreation space, then you want a whole bunch of other individual, really beautiful places that people can go and they don't want to be in a super crazy, busy community environment that's public space. It's a very simple thing to do when you think about it ahead of time. And so we're building all of this in the model. And we're taking that and we're packaging it so that people could build just an aquapini or just a wallapini or just a tropical atrium or just an earth dome home, super, super affordable. Or they could build a complete village model or they can build a complete teacher demonstration village that's purpose to host other people coming in and visiting and experiencing this lifestyle, seeing what it's all about, being able to take those blueprints out and duplicate it for themselves. And those people coming and visiting provide a revenue stream, an additional rev revenue stream, in addition to what's possible with the botanical garden, the food production, the energy production, which could feed power back into the grid. There are so many different revenue streams that are built into this, and we have all that infrastructure on the website as well. Because what does the business model look like? For-profit, non-profit business, an entrepreneurial model for people creating businesses that are sponsored by the community model. All of this stuff put together in one place. What an idea, right? That's what we're doing. And so um, with that, that's why we have the Sego Center Duplicable City Hub that we're putting so much time and energy into because the value of that city hub, which would cost about the same amount as maybe two or three houses, can replace the need for a dining room in 200 houses. Building one industrial kitchen and then streamlining the process for that. Not everybody has to do that. Obviously, our, our city model and all everything that we're doing, this stuff could be expanded in, in a thousand different ways with a thousand different iterations, and we want to see that. That's the idea is to create open source blueprints so that people don't have to invest money in the foundational infrastructure aspects, the basics. We're figuring out the basics. We're building it as a toolkit for then expanding and evolving beyond that toolkit, and that's what the whole open source project launch blueprinting process that we are so committed to as a nonprofit organization, that's what it's all about, is we'll give you the toolkit, and then we want to work with you to improve the toolkit so that it's a more effective toolkit for people that want to use it and teach you how to duplicate it exactly, answer the questions that people are coming in. Every single question that we get via email, every single question gets addressed on the website if it's not already. That's how we evolve it. Well, we've set the tempo, we set the template for what it is that we want to do indefinitely is to continue to pr improve and collaborate globally with everybody that's asking us questions to be able to produce what's necessary to make these models easier, more affordable, more sustainable, more ecologically sound and effective for everybody. And so in doing that, that's why we have the ACE app. And so this beautifully segues into the ACE application. So here we are creating this city. It's got food, it's got energy, it's got housing infrastructure. It's also got education infrastructure, fulfilled living elements, and a recreational model that's built into it as well. How do you track, objectively track, the value of that? Because we want to know. We believe we know what the value of that is. We know, we know that we want it. Everybody in our team, which is 100% uh, volunteers, know what that looks like and that we want it, but we want to put an actual objective monetary value to it, just like we're calculating out the specifics of how much it's going to cost for materials how much to build the Earth Bag Village, how much exactly, how much it's going to cost for equipment. If you want to buy everything from scratch, how much does it cost for equipment? Those details, equipment details, for instance, are already done. Materials details are being worked on. All of these details, we want to bring that, those specifics down to as close as we can to the penny, so you say, this is pretty much how much this is going to cost, but we also want to be able to track and evolve it in real space as we're using that and make sure that everything that we've calculated and planned to the best of our ability ahead of time is accurate. And then as somebody else builds a city or a village, we want them to be able to feed their data and information into our database. And then the two of us building this can create an even better model because now we've shared our ideas, we've shared our experience with their experience in a manner that is organized such that it's it's usable by both groups and then can be put out to the world as open source and free shared content. And so that's what we've created the ACE application for. And so the ACE application is designed specifically for tracking time within our organization, which is how we already use it, 
right now is we're logging our time invested in this project every single uh, week. We sit down, well, every single day. We sit down and we log our time. I've got a time log for my own personal time invested in this project for the last two years where I've logged every single hour that I put into this. That's how I can say that. I put in 40 to 60 hours every single week and I've never missed a week. How do I know that? I've got a record of it. But we're keeping track of that and we're setting, setting that as our standard because we know that it's really, really important for people to understand if they're going to build a sustainable village, that they're going to build a sustainable community or sustainable city, we believe that it's essential that they know how much money it's going to cost and how much time and energy it's going to take. Those two factors we think are the most important thing for people to understand. And we want to bring both of those down as much as possible. And so the ACE application has been designed, it's being used right now to track our time and energy investment and the infrastructure details that we're creating right now that won't have to be reduplicated because we're already figuring it out. We're already creating the CAD files. We're already creating the 3D renderings. We're already creating the planting plans. We're already creating the planting maps. All that stuff is already done. So somebody doesn't need to reduplicate that. But when we actually land on the property and we've got our own blueprints to be able to build what it is that we're purposed to build, that's when it becomes absolutely essential that we track exactly how much time and energy it takes to build everything so that we can tell somebody, hey, we went out there without our own tutorials and we sat down and we, as a group of people dedicated to building this, we got together and we built it and it took us this many man hours to do. This many labor hours were committed to the project. This is how long it took and we think that it's a reasonable projection that it'll take you the same amount of time or significantly less because here's our tools and tutorials and resources and we're here to help. We're here to help answer the questions that come up about how we did everything and to refine the process as we're doing it, as we're open sourcing, just like we're doing right now, we're open sourcing every single step of the way because that way when people have questions, they ask us those questions, we can refine, we can take those questions and we can make the process more effective. And so that's how our project is evolving and we're purposed to do this indefinitely. That's the whole idea. We want to bring together two, three hundred people to begin with. You know, we'll build to our first group of two, three hundred people, permanent residents, nonprofit volunteers working to, to, to create these seven different village models and to problem solve and create open source content and be the number one producer of open source content in the world. And it's not going to take us ten years to do that. We'll do it within six months of being on the property. And if you go to our open source page, you can see the details of our exact strategy. Our plan is to put out 300 videos in the first six months, which are tutorials on how to do everything that we're doing, and then time-lapse photography on building it all. We're already creating the 3D models and working on all this different stuff so that people can walk around within these environments even before they're built, and this is how we're working out the kinks and making sure that we've got everything, and we can sell the idea to somebody like, hey, this is a good idea. This is something that you want to do. Check this out. These are amazing, and look at how affordable they are and they're sustainable. So these houses will last, an earth bag home, properly built earth bag home, these things will last for hundreds of years. They're virtually indestructible. They're really amazing. They're, you're, you know, I mean, they will survive uh, a cataclysmic event because the way that they're designed, they're just, I mean, it's like, it's, they're, they're amazing, amazing structures. You know, and so our idea is to make this stuff mainstream, to sell the public on the idea, to get the public not really even to sell the idea, to make the, make the idea so enticing and so exciting to people looking at it as an option and so affordable and so predictable as far as the time and energy invested into it that people can make the decision and say, yes, this is something I want to do. This is exciting. And then to support that with a lifestyle that's provided that by that sustainability, which is the, the bigger picture of the one community model and what that looks like. And then to tie it all back to the ACE application, to gather objective data on what that looks like. I talked about how a resource-based economy is basically a family model. The idea of sharing space and sharing materials and things that, that help make the family unit a more effective family unit within the family unit. Well, if you expand that idea to a larger group of people, and of course this is already happening in tribal societies and you know less civilized societies, but what if now with the technology that we have today, what if we applied that as people within our own groups? What if we got together with a group of 100 people and we pooled our resources? 
well now instead of me having to go to the grocery store every single week I can walk 15 minutes and have fresh food instead of me making every meal for myself maybe I'm the person responsible with two or three other people to sit down and collaborate and great create a huge meal that would feed 50 people just take that one example and look at the time resources alone that are saved in just those two examples multiplied by just 50 people. Instead of going to the grocery store, now you can produce most of your food in-house and have whatever needs to be picked up by one or two people instead of 50 people. Imagine the shift in the carbon footprint for that. Now apply that to the concept of making food. Instead of 50 people making 25 meals if they're 50 couples, now you have three or four people that are making enough food for 50 people and you've got people really putting time and energy so it's not just me because I don't have a lot of time throwing together a meal it's four or five people that really love to cook having that be their contribution to the whole and saying oh we prepared this amazing meal for you and then I get to say wow I get to enjoy this I helped build this amazing house for you and grow this amazing food for you today or I produce this amazing open source content for the global collaboration that shares our project with more people so visitors come and want to see what it is that we're doing and that supports the community. You know, or maybe I was the person who was taking care of, who was, who was operating part of the education program or doing childcare. You know, and so by organizing labor this way and working together as a group and teaching people the value of community collaboration and cooperation like we see that as one of the most valuable aspects of what one community is. And the ACE application is there to track that. Right? So we have a whole social architecture that's built into one community. This idea that is people are putting in 40 hours of community contribution to keep everything running. A 40-hour work week. But because we're combining tasks like laundry, and that's why we, you know, the Sego Center laundry facility has now been designed for 300 people. You know, it take us a couple, few years to get to 300 people, but we've got a facility that will be able to do laundry for 300 people. If you put a few people on laundry duty, on a rotating laundry duty, they could do laundry for 300 people. Imagine the time savings on laundry alone. Combine that now with food. Combine that now with grocery store stuff. Take all that and put that together, and then take that, then you have your 40-hour work week, and now our goal is, okay, we've saved all this time. What's our purpose? We'll change. Let's make a difference in the lives of each other. Let's make a difference in the lives of the world. Let's make a difference in, in addressing the fact that right now, a child starves to death every 10 seconds. What if we could create a sustainable communities model that could take the food and resources necessary to feed those people and not just to deliver it, to drop it off like, oh, here's some grain, here's some rice eat but to actually build infrastructure and integrate in with that culture and create a teacher demonstration village in the areas that need it most do you think that those people would be interested in that we do do we think that the mainstream public would be interested in that we do if we can provide a lifestyle that most people would consider to be superior to their nine to five job doing something that maybe not doesn't really that they're clear isn't really contributing anything to their own lives or to society. You know, for people that love their jobs and know that they're already doing something, probably not the model for them, but could be. But for people that are really looking for something, a way to do, to do something different, a way to, to really make a difference in their own lives and simultaneously to make a difference in the lives of others, that's what this model is about. And so the ACE application is designed to look at the social architecture aspect of what it is that we're doing. All that free time that's freed up, you go, okay, well, we've got a 40-hour work week, but we're going to make our lives way more efficient. And we're going to put 35 hours into keeping one community doing what it's purpose to do, creating open source blueprints, demonstrating a way of living that is really transformational and impactful for people. And then we're going to take the extra time, we're going to take five hours from everybody's and contribute that to social architecture and making the environment hyper-enriched with amazing things to do. And the ASAP, along with tracking materials, the ASAP, along with tracking labor contribution into the, the, uh, each of the different building projects that we can objectively share that, will also be tracking participation in the different recreational aspects in our one community. Participation by people within the community and within the village and within the cities, as well as participation of people visiting. And we believe that that objective data could have more impact, possibly, 
or at least as much impact as everything else that we're doing because it's really going to define what people choose to do, how people choose to live their lives when finances are no longer an issue, when travel is no longer an issue, when time is no longer an issue because they no longer have a commute because of this more efficient model of living. And then you have this variety of everything that you can do within this environment within walking distance. We think this concept will sell sustainable, sustainable villages and cities and communities to the mainstream in a way that people can't even imagine right now. We think that people will want it, you know? And so our goal is to make it as easy as possible for people who want it to create that. And that's what One Community is all about. And that's our highest good of all philosophy. And that's what the ASAP is meant to track. It's meant to track all this objective data, but it's also meant to really, really objectively identify what fulfilled living looks like to be able to look at that and see what the rhythms are of people when they are presented with this idea, this opportunity. Like, I ask myself the question, Club Med's not exciting to me, but if Club Med was exciting to me and I lived at Club Med and that was my life, was basically to keep Club Med functioning and I did that 35 hours a week, I never had to leave Club Med or whatever your vacation retirement environment might look like. You put in your time and energy to keeping the whole thing running and performing its purpose, which is catering to the public, etc. And then the rest of the time you get to in, you get to really participate in the environment and, and experience that, whatever that environment looks like for you. The question I would ask and that I'm interested in the ASAP is meant to define is specifically what do people choose? How does that environment evolve? What's the difference between people that live there and people that visit? What, what is the trend? What is the, what is the rhythm of that environment? I don't, we don't know. There's no way to really test that. I don't think anybody's ever gathered that data, you know. And so, and then, how does the rhythm of that environment affect um, our individual effectiveness? How does the rhythm of that environment affect our productivity and our ability to produce things and how do different fluctuations, seasons, um, world events, uh, personal events and things like that, how do those things affect that rhythm? And so the ACE application is meant to be an opportunity to, to explore what that is in a really objective and fairly hands-off way, you know, to just see what that looks like because the whole process of tracking and because the commitment of creating this village is built on a 40-hour work week and tracking that and looking at that and we have a group of people that are committed to keeping track of our time and, and showing exactly what that is because it's important, it's essential to our open source goals and sharing that. It's just this beautiful circle like, hey, we want to do this because it makes sense for open source but it produces this amazing data and man, I am curious, I think psychologists could sit and dissect that data for years and draw conclusions on what that means and what that could do for the world, you know, and then on top of it, well, we got to keep track of all of our materials and all of our tools and everything that's used to build all this stuff. And so we're building all that into the ASAP. And so this is a big, long, drawn out uh, high five to the concept of the ACE application and Justin Palmer, who's our, our uh, application designer, who's put so much time months into designing this and the brainstorm session that we just had getting clear on what the next steps are. And so we're starting to add in notification processes and other details of what that ASAP looks like. And you can test drive the very rudimentary version of that through the website right now because it's open source and the code is there. But we'll continue to update it, that as it continues to evolve. And that's where we're going with it all. And it all ties back into this idea of a resource-based economy, which people could do everything we're doing without that. It all ties back into this idea of complete sustainable communities and people could take any piece of what we're doing and build that without a community village or city model. But we, what we really want to create is we want to create that ultimate, that ultimate toolkit. We want to create that ultimate open source free shared guide for building a complete village model, a complete teacher demonstration village model. That's what we're all about. And that's what our website is all about. And that's why we talk about them being self replicating teacher demonstration communities villages and cities they're self-replicating because we believe that the fulfilled living model will be such so compelling to the mainstream public that people will want it and in wanting it and making it easy for people to duplicate it then they will flock to it 
And so that's what creates a self-replicating aspect. And we see it as an investment. We see it as an opportunity uh, for a retirement plan for some people. We see it as a philanthropic or humanitarian effort for other people. We see it truly benefiting for the highest good of all. We see it benefiting all people for different reasons. And so our goal is just to produce the blueprints. And then we get to sit there and support everybody duplicating those blueprints and spreading it around the whole world. And so, man, that's exciting. So with that, I will wrap up. I told you I had lots to share. I just wanted to uh, go off about all this stuff because it was so exciting. You know, the food infrastructure details that we've made, the botanical garden details that we've made and um, that we've put up on the website, the things that we've been working on for a long time, and it's just all coming together. All the pieces are coming together, the 3D aspects now in the Sego Center. We'll put pictures up on the website. And so um, thanks, 35 minutes. This is the longest blog yet. I appreciate it. As always, your likes and uh, your sharing of these videos is really, really helpful to us. Um, we appreciate all the emails and comments that we get as well. If you're not already, please subscribe to our channel so you can get these weekly updates. Every single week we'll do an update like this. And this is number 19, and we'll just keep on keeping on forever. I can't wait until we're doing 5 or 10 or 20 of them a day on the property. Uh, sharing all the different things that are going on and video blogging on it and all the tools and tutorials. So moving in that direction, lots of forward movement, very exciting stuff. And with that, I will wrap and say until next week, thank you very much. Have a fantastic week.